record the um, this meeting is being recorded sheet which basically talks about the uh, what are the different projects so the request uh, for project sheet um, one second let me share that with you folks This is basically the sheet. Um, so what I want to do in this class for today is not to do the uh, splitwise thing that we discussed, but instead um, I want to first set the ground for all of these 10 different ideas and maybe list some resources um, for e each of these ideas and how you can think about it. Any examples that we can do, we can have a good discussion about it. Uh, the reason being that you folks can then get started with your projects right away. Um, I am not sure if uh, like what what's basically been informed to you in terms of uh, whether you have to create it individually or in a group format. Uh, maybe you can write it in the uh, comments or the chat, uh, whatever has been communicated to you. Um, but yeah, we can basically start going over all of these ideas. Uh, uh, link it to some base repositories. Uh, that you can take the help of. Um, I'm actually going to just create a copy of the sheet uh, with remarks. Give me a second. Okay. And I'm going to share it and we'll just go over all of these ideas one by one. Uh, so we'll link some Aptos references. Uh, we can link some normal GitHub references for the project idea and some other language. Uh, so you can basically view the normal web two logic that has been applied. Uh, then and then you can think of how you can transform it into web three logic. Okay. So second. So I'm giving you folks edit access for this, the, the doc that I'll be sharing. So in this remarks, you can actually add more things as well as in soon any of you start working on, on this. Um, maybe you can also mark who, who is interested to work on this. So maybe you can just mark your name or something over who wants to pick up the idea. And um, that can also enable you to understand who all are working on the same idea. So give me a second. Okay, so I've shared this. Uh, I'm going to share my screen as well, and we can start going over this talk. Okay, so I think one can be. So there are 10 ideas here. Uh, let's just go over this first um, and then we'll go over it like uh, in depth. Okay, so first idea it's in the gaming sector. It talks about the folk for gaming engine. Last time also we had got this idea, but uh, I wasn't sure what it entails. So let's just look at the description. So players can participate in poker games directly, knowing that the game's rules and outcomes are immutable and verifiable on the Aptos blockchain. Decentralized poker engines empower users with full control over their funds, eliminating the need for intermediaries and enabling seamless P2P transactions, revolutionizing the world of online poker. Okay, fine. So, uh, in this case, um, so what you have to think of first of all is that knowing that the game's rules and outcomes are immutable and verifiable on the Aptos blockchain, which means that your smart contracts need to contain these actual rules rules and outcomes. Um, so I think as far as I know, I have very limited knowledge of poker, but uh, there are basically certain hands that have like more um, like on a 
hierarchy they have more preference than some other hands uh, so you have to basically code that in so uh, if uh, this is the round and if that is the combination that everyone has uh, again do not have a lot of knowledge about poker but imagine that let's say everyone has like five cards and um, among all of these uh, combinations this should be the winning hand right and that comes through this hierarchy that has been defined Uh, which puts uh, like this particular combination at number one, this particular combination at number two, something like that. So through that, you determine that okay, uh, you can have a function that says like find the winning hand or something, and you are able to compute and get that right. So this is the way you can uh, think of this, and this needs to be baked into your smart contract because they have mentioned this, and uh, whatever is like, but whenever that um, declaration happens for this is the winner or something. that is going to be um, your uh, like your uh, like uh, function outcome basically the result that would come from it then th that would be a transaction uh, when that happens that the game has ended and it has ended with this particular response okay so you can code it like that uh, and the second thing that they have mentioned over here is think of it from a payments standpoint okay uh, because they have mentioned full control over the funds and eliminating the need for intermediaries and enabling a seamless p2p transactions okay So this one would be pretty straightforward from a payment standpoint. What you will have to think of uh, is if you see normally how these apps work, all these betting apps and um, all of these payment uh, things that happen. Even right now, World Cup is going on. A lot of people are doing like um, like cricket betting and stuff like that, right? So the way it would work is that some intermediary will come in and they will basically take some portion of whatever money is being exchanged as a fee for the platform, whatever, whatever, right? um and then it's also not seamless in nature because it will take quite some time for the money to then cred be credited to whatever account or maybe you can only um like get the funds after a week's time or a month's time or whatever it would be right uh, in that case so uh, in this case you can imagine it very simply that um this is like when you start the game uh, you will have to like basically bet something you um you will get some uh, chips based on that again uh i am not the right person for this but yeah something like that you can just show that this is the amount that the player player is locking in and um, then they have some winnings then this is the balance so every account will have a certain balance associated um post whatever game is happening and then uh, like during that decision making you also need to take into account uh, how much money is being lost or gained by each player and that is what you need to enable at that time that uh, for example this is the winner he gets like uh, let's say plus 10 10 10 10 for each of the other players who are sitting right and everyone else loses uh, minus 10 so you need to maintain this and make during that step make this particular thing happen right so this is the way that you will have to uh, code it so i'm just going to write here up to blockchain uh like basically what are the things that would be here uh, one is uh one second uh yeah so hmm. one is basically your um mm -hmm. yeah rules and uh outcomes coded as functions on the smart contract hierarchy of cards or hands define um winner compute and game end uh define okay uh defined uh, and then we have uh keeping track of gain slash loss per player when round ends and updating balance based on it. okay so let's just put it here uh Okay, that's too small. Okay, cool. 
so uh okay now let's go to the next idea this is the docus an idea we have already discussed this a little bit uh secure an immutable ledger for all digital signatures making document authenticity and integrity unassailable by decentralizing the verification process it eliminates the need for the trusted third party reducing costs and enhancing trust in digital transactions docusign and blockchain ensures that signatures are tamper proof and traceable fostering a new era of transparent and efficient document management okay so i would not go much into this because we had discussed uh, more or less a lot on this so ipfs uh, for uh, pinning files and um, second is uh, multi sig uh, uh, signature scheme uh, third is uh, expiry expiry um a uh, fourth can be metadata update so this is more or less what you would require for here next move to the third idea a uh, gaming randomized slot machine plugin okay a randomized slot machine plugin introduces a new level of fairness and transparency to online gambling every spin is random and verifiably so reducing the risk of manipulation or cheating players can trust that external factors do not influence their chance of winning payouts and outcomes are recorded on the aptos blockchain offering an immutable and publicly accessible record of the game's history the plugin can integrate with existing dapps to improve user engagement okay so this you have to design as a plugin which you can essentially uh, put in any other application so the way you can think of this is basically uh, starting with flexibility in uh, defining the um, defining the symbols that are there and uh, number of symbols okay so what i mean by this is um, think of it that you have seen those uh, three uh, symbol machines right let's say uh it will have uh, maybe an apple a banana uh, something else right as the different symbols possible and it will have uh, three uh, consecutive like slots in it and if all three together get something like let's say win 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 that is when you win okay so here uh, basically the complexity of the game goes up uh if there are more uh, combinations pnc basically possible in this case permutations and combinations so that will depend first of all on the number of symbols that would be there in each of the like slots um and then how many number of uh, like slots are there as well uh, so um like the game would get more complex if there are five as compared to three uh for both the things like the computation would basically increase because uh you will be essentially doing let's say you have three possibilities for each slot and there are three slots possible so you will basically have uh three possibilities for the first one three for the next one and three uh, for the next one so it will go like three cube right uh now imagine if you have a system which will have instead of three symbols in one slot will have five symbols so it will go to five cube if you have four slots then it will go to 5 is 12 4 so this is the way it will basically uh, get modified so you need to allow the um like dap uh, like at ad admin to define the flexibility that would be there in terms of the symbols and the number of symbols number of symbols number of slots okay then um when we need to discuss uh yeah every spin is random and verifiably so reducing the risk of manipulation or cheating so this is something that we will discuss at length uh, aptos uh, randomization let's say aptos finding uh, randomized numbers so if you have uh, done things on solidly you would uh, basically remember that uh, for get like generating random numbers is like a major problem essentially and because uh it can be like whatever factors we put in it can get influenced and then it can be essentially not randomized and then can be calculated um and for those reasons we end up using something like chain link to get like 
actually random uh, things, right? So that's the reason that the, the Aptos also has like a section based on this. This is what we have to go through and understand how we can create this. And then uh, players, uh, payouts and outcomes are recorded on the Aptos blockchain. So which is like pretty uh, obvious. So uh, if there's a match for the match for the slots, it can have like uh, different uh, winnings attached to it. Uh, and uh, you have to do the uh, payout similar to the similar to uh, poker idea, right? So, but here instead of uh, like uh, doing it for multiple parties, like how you saw in the first example for poker. In this case, it wouldn't be multiple parties, uh, but it would be like a single player who's either going to win or lose, right? So this is more or less the idea. Now coming to the next one. So this on-chain exponent sharing, this is the splitwise thing that we had uh, seen last time also. So streamline and automate the process of splitting bills and tracking shared expenses. Users can create immutable smart contracts that record transactions, ensuring trust and accuracy among participants. These on-chain contracts facilitate transfer and record keeping, settlement and dispute resolution, eliminating the need for trust in a central entity. Okay. So again, okay. so this will basically entail it would be um, similar to the uh, to-do list idea can be replaced with expenses or uh, define different functions to create uh, create slash settle uh, slash remove expenses uh, as well as uh, define who the expenses are shared with. Like initially, you will have to choose are shared with uh, either in a group or an individual. Okay, and then um, whenever uh, like they add an expense, uh, so whenever you add an expense, you can think of it here only that. Uh, creation maybe you can have uh, a list of participants who are part of it okay um so imagine there are some 10 people uh, who are part of your split advice um as participants and whenever you create an expense you can choose from those 10 uh, wallet accounts or something that these are the people uh, and this is the expense uh, that is being shared and then uh, whenever that expense is created you can just uh, maintain basically the plus minus uh, amongst all the participants and accordingly you can show that okay so this is pretty straightforward um, okay then we have photo to nft so this idea says empower individuals and artists to turn their cherished photos into unique tradable digital assets Users can upload their images, click pictures with just a few clicks, mint them as NFTs, and then list them on existing NFT marketplaces for sale or sharing with collectors worldwide. This app leverages Aptos blockchain to provide proof of ownership, authenticity, and provenance for each NFT, opening up exciting opportunities in digital art, photography, and collectibles. This is actually a very easy idea, but it's actually one of the ideas that can uh, make money. Uh, Keith, I have shared the link unless you came uh, a little late and you have missed it. Let me share it again for the folks who came in late. Um, I just shared it again. Okay, coming back. Right, so this is one of like the uh, ideas that are not um, like that uh, recognized, like sorry, that not that difficult to me, but it's actually one of the ideas that can uh, generate revenue to be honest because um, there's something that if you can get the foundation folks to uh, push uh, and uh, always for any blockchain right this is going to be a priority to get more artists on board to get more digital art that happens on that blockchain so they will definitely market and help you in terms of this and for artists or 
election that are coming, you can straight up like charge something uh, for giving this platform. It's similar to how you see OpenSea and all. Um, they don't charge you when you actually list it, but when it gets sold or something, that is a point where they'll like take a cut from that. So yeah. Uh, so here again, this is going to be pretty straightforward. You can uh, go to NFT dot storage or any other service or other services that. Oh, okay, wait a second. Yeah, NFT dot storage or other services at the pin the that pin the file on files on IPFS. Um, then you will have to uh, again create a JSON containing NFT metadata, which you can get from input fields, such as name, description, So, okay, so what I mean by this is first of all, you will have to upload the file itself, write the image, and then second, again, you will have to, uh, through input fields, for example, you just have the image, right? But you want some NFT metadata with it as well. For example, the name, the description, um, uh, something else as well, the creators, whatever name, blah, 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 uh, you want to store. So again, you will take all of this data with the image field that will link back to your uh, normal, uh, uh, JSON NFT method, sorry, to a normal uh, uploaded file CID, uh, the one that you uploaded first, that image, right? It will link back to it. Um, you will get this NFT meta metadata JSON file, which you will upload again on IPFS, and then you'll get a new CID for that. Uh, and then this is the, this will be, this will act as the, uh, this will act as the token URI essentially for your uh, NFT on Aptos. Okay, so this is the way you can set it. Like if you remember, we had done in our class the NFT example. So uh, there we had uploaded uh, an image. Um, it was of this glittery uh, cat sort of a thing, right? So similarly, you can modify this to take this as the token URI. And uh, you will have like a mint button uh, if you like clicking on it uh, can enable uh, creation of the uh, NFT. Right, so pretty straightforward. Uh, mint them as NFT, click with just a few clicks, NFT, and then list them on existing NFT marketplace for sale or sharing with collectors worldwide. Okay. And the next angle to this can be that, um, uh, yeah, through this you can have have an integration uh, with other uh, smart contracts of existing Aptos um, market, NFT marketplaces. So you imagine that you did this and now in this tool itself, you can sh show something like a list on uh, NFT marketplaces, which will show them a range of options of the existing Aptos uh, NFT marketplaces. Clicking on that will trigger, uh, clicking on any of these will, give me a second. Uh, clicking on this will trigger, uh, clicking on any of these will trigger a, a, a list uh, function, smart contract call on that NFT marketplaces. Um, contract okay so this is the way it will work uh, one second folks Okay, so coming back, yeah. 
so this is what you can do here or uh, share uh, or sharing with collectors worldwide and you can also have a share option which can basically uh, do like a preview thing for them uh, on whatever on whatsapp pg blah blah maybe it can just create a message and it can just like be shared instantly right so that is something that can be done now uh coming to this uh, move solidity to move okay uh, a tool to compile solidity code directly into move allowing users to integrate solidity based applications with move virtual machine effortlessly hmm. this is again uh this will again be a very very excellent thing uh, for anyone who can build this um so you will have to basically think of uh um uh, i actually do not know what would be the right approach for this uh but the evm code that you get how can you think of it being converted in the move virtual machine the mvm byte code this is essentially the way that you would have to think of it uh but that being said it would like it it would cause a lot of problems so some examples references that i can give here is neon and uh, aurora so these both are working towards this i think neon does for um, uh solidity and solana maybe and aurora does it for uh solidity and uh rust i guess i think both of them do that aurora is with One second, let me take a look. Yeah, Aurora is uh, for the near one. So, and Neon Labs is for. yeah uh, solana okay uh so they have basically uh built out an evm on that particular chain have to look a little bit to understand how they are doing it uh, but the reality of the thing being that this is going to be a hard harder uh, attempt because uh, while the these they have tried to build this out it doesn't work the way it should actually function so that is one major challenge when you're trying to convert things uh, like this uh, so i'm not sure uh, how this would work maybe we can read after this post this but yeah this is like some references that you can look at to just go through their uh, white paper or their docs to see how they are doing it uh, and but i i do feel like this would be a more complex uh tom statement to solve okay moving to this one uh anonymous polls with social proof okay anonymous on chain polling gated with social proof is a promising solution for many applications including governance and decentralized organizations public referendums election systems and more however it's essential to design the blockchain based polling system carefully to address specific requirements and potential challenges such as scalability and voter identity verification okay this is a loaded um prompt let me break the sound one by one okay uh gated with social proofs i'm not sure what they mean here with a social proof Yeah. Let me try searching if I can understand what is the social proof. Social proof and collections.
uh, okay i think it's it's basically saying it's a psychological thing that happens uh there like if you see someone has voted and stuff that will motivate you to like go and vote and stuff um believe like the symbol that they do uh that is like a good way and they have also shown it like uh, someone has written in terms of like developing a rest api where they have this method called the get ballot count i'll just copy this as well uh one second so this basically meaning that um because they are getting this uh idea that oh so many people have voted etc they are more like inclined to go and do it so you can think of it in some sense uh with the symbol that you have on your uh, finger as well to indicate that you have done it so i guess a way to define this I, again i'm not sure what they are asking of it i will ask them again as well but i think one way to think of it is that uh instead of showing who they have voted for because we are talking about anonymity here uh they can still understand whether someone has voted or not uh and get the numbers maybe not basically identify who is the person in question that's why the get ballot count makes sense um here basically you will have to think from a perspective of uh just again smart contract which will keep uh which will keep uh participant identity private so there should be no uh like no functions or something that expose the caller that expose the voter or something okay and uh, what the get calls should be get calls should be um limited to uh, getting starts or computing uh, computing winner okay so this is the only uh, way that should be defined uh, voter uh, voter identity verification is also uh, also a problem statement that needs to be thought of that uh, someone is voting like if you want to take this one layer up you can do an ocr over some national document that they have to verify that uh, they are a uh, citizen or they are above the uh, like they they are of the age of voting and stuff so ocr over some national document to check whether whether criteria passes and allow to vote but not store this data anywhere data anywhere okay so this is the way you can think of it more or less um there will be like many more functions that you will have to do uh, but this this should the for the base align this should work fine okay so next idea is a music nft platform a space where musicians and artists can tokenize their music albums concert tickets merchandise and other assets as nfts these platforms facilitate the creation minting and distribution of music related nfts allowing artists to directly connect with their fans uh, gain financial support and offer um uh rahul and keith uh now i think you have two weeks of time to start working on your projects i think it's four weeks of 
classes plus two weeks of project time. Um, but I am not sure like what would be your submission dates or what would be your demo day dates. Uh, I think Kiran would be able to comment better on that or if Fozia can comment on that. Um, but yeah, that is more or less the, yeah, the time that you will get for this. Mm, okay, coming back to this. Yeah, a space where musicians and artists can tokenize their music, albums, concert tickets, merchandise, and other assets as NFTs. These platforms facilitate the creation, minting, and distribution of music-related NFTs, allowing artists to directly connect with their fans, gain financial support, and offer unique collectible experiences. Music NFT platforms utilize Aptos blockchain to ensure transparent ownership records and fair compensation for artists revolutionizing the music industry. Okay. So this is again a very open prompt. You can think of it from like various different ways. Uh, but for a base idea, I'll just lay down what are the pointers you can think of. Um, okay, open idea. Uh, so first we are talking about tokenizing using albums, concert ticket, merchandise and other assets as NFTs. Okay, so you can just do the first uh, image to NFT idea that came, right? about NFT idea uh, base plus over that base you need to uh, replace uh, image with any type of file because we are talking here about uh, a music album concert etc type of file okay and and also specify Token stand different token standards, different token standards. So, for example, um, if they're tokenizing the music and stuff, then you can think of like royalties over there. Whenever they make money, uh, you can also like make money from that. Um, similarly, for tickets, also you can think of that royalty standards, etc. Uh, merchandise essentially would not work in that way, so you would, you would, you cannot make it like that. So basically, you think of the different token standards that can be possible for the different offerings that they have. Okay. Uh, uh, directly connect with the fans, gain financial support offering. So you can then also think from an idea of utility-based NFTs. Utility-based. NFTs. So uh, you can maybe do some uh, gatekeeping in this platform as well. Gatekeeping on the platform. Uh, so certain sections, certain sections only accessible to token holders of uh, token holders of that artist so you can think of it like this as well that only people who have the this thing like the token whatever token might be your you can decide that only they will be able to maybe join that artist like group or some sort of a feed where they can see whatever the artist is posting etc etc and you can you can also think of tipping the artist or any specific post they are making. You can also think of it from these lines. How you can build something that can support this. Okay. Uh, okay, and then they are also talking about transparent ownership records and fair compensation for artists. So one thing you can do is maybe study uh, Spotify is uh, essentially like a cruel model for artists because the artists don't end up making a lot of money from these platforms. Most of it kind of goes away. Uh, I think they get some like some very very small amount for getting streamed, and Spotify keeps most of the uh, money that comes from there. So you can actually go through their model and you can think how you can make it more friendly for the artist and also mention maintain these transparent ownership records again uh, if you have 
follow Taylor Swift and you have seen basically how they're like record companies that kind of own your music. They have like copyright over it. And uh, whenever things happen, like uh, essentially the artist loses control of their own music. So you can think of it from those angles. Okay. Next question is a unique category of non-fungible tokens that go beyond static digital assets. Dynamic NFTs can change, adapt, or respond to external factors or user interactions, adding a layer of interactivity and uniqueness. Build a dynamic NFT model that can be plugged in with communities. Okay. Uh, this is again something that um, that can be coded uh from like i think two three different angles you can think of it one is a normal ipfs like uh, modifying the uh, ipfs nft metadata NFT metadata so a dynamic nft here means that uh, Whatever information you're giving it or feeding it at that point of time, the NFT is created from that. And then at a later point of time, if you edit it, if you change things, it can change based on that. One of a very good use case for dynamic NFTs is essentially gaming. So if you see or if you're like a counter strike player or something, you will have uh, whatever player and it will you'll have some guns unlocked, some skins unlocked, etc. Right. So these are things that you can think of like from a dynamic NFT standpoint. You will have some scores, you'll have some kills, etc. So these can all be properties that you can save as uh, information on the like user's account essentially, um, which can be modified, adapted, or like it can respond to external factors or user interactions. Okay, even if there is a live match that is going on and a player has health or some attribute which gets like constantly updated whenever like they're playing whatever okay so this is one idea that can, you can look into and also basically the token standards which are already there already there on um aptos so you can also think of it from this point because we have uh, move lang. So um, if you have checked out, uh, Sui basically has this thing of composable NFTs. So in, in move lang, it's not very difficult to build uh, something of that uh, nature. So let me actually show you, maybe link something. I'm just linking it here and I'll also put it in the chat. So uh, it talks about how Aptos token has married a defined token data and it has this token underscore properties, a map like structure containing optional customized metadata not covered by existing field. So this is something that you can uh, take like account of and actually um, make any changes to whatever you can do, right? So that can essentially uh, simplify the process that in this dynamic NFT use case that we have discussed. And they have also mentioned that think of it from a community standpoint. So you can think of every person who is part of the community. They will have some stats associated with them. Maybe they will have uh, Maybe they will have like a permission level, permission level. Um, they will have uh, some contributions attached with them. Some score uh, or like whatever, like you can think of it from whatever possible things can happen in a community. 
maybe like if they have voted on proposals uh, uh so yeah you can think of it from these manners like how you can um think of this for a community so that is something that can be modified they can have their own profile as well uh, so they can edit their profile details as well and last is a learn to earn plugin so learn to earn plugins typically refer to add on or modules that enable users to acquire knowledge or skills by earning rewards or incentives this plugin can simply be integrated with existing dapps to gamify learning experiences and encourage user engagement again so we are talking about a plugin here so first let's try to answer this from a plugin view point so there needs to be flexibility again because we are talking about a plugin let me actually make it smaller okay so flexibility uh to define um define module number of lessons um module which will mean it's like name description etc what would be the number of lessons payout for each lesson like for completing each lesson or maybe for the entire module how so ever you want to define it um add on yeah pay out for each lesson or maybe some uh, final submission format like what they submit at the last to verify or to give track of that they have completed final submission okay so a format this is what you can keep for the flexibility point then how can you actually build this is just um you are just saying that these are the this is the module name description these are the different lessons as and so people are completing it you are marking it so it can be something like a to do list where the is complete gets marked as true like a boolean field and when that is happening a payout either happens then or it happens at the end uh, when the module is completely done so there at that point like a pay payment will happen so payment um happens at the end and like the user is connected with their wallet address all of these are recorded as transactions uh and maybe like um you can do something to mark mark the source mark the source of tab through which the traffic is coming in because you will have to index and show progress for each uh, participant okay so this can be uh, how you can think for the this idea okay so let me see in solidity dynamic nfts are using oracle data for dynamic properties do we have similar concepts on aptos uh now i'm not sure what you're referring to oracle's data for its dynamic properties like what kind of data are we talking about here so for, for example the example you took right for uh... let's say a player's ranking or a player's statistics are getting changed for a dynamic property mm -hmm. right so what actually is happening is that uh, the the data that is getting changed for example the ranking is being you know kind of fed up uh, you know kind of provided to the oracles for for example the chain link and then uh, the dynamic nft is referring to the chain link's uh, endpoint to fetch the latest data for that particular player mm -hmm. 
so in that way uh, you are protecting the you know uh, uh, the the kind of uh, uniqueness of the data uh, transparency of the data using the chain links and at, uh, at the same time the dynamic nft is uh, uh, the property of that dynamic nft is getting changed right mm. because on normal ipfs server once you wrote something uh, it cannot be changed right so then we lose the uh, property of the dynamic nft you got it uh, yeah. okay so to answer your question ram yeah i mean there are other oracle services that have integrated with aptos i'm not sure if chainlink has integrated with aptos or not uh but i do know for a fact that uh, i think this switchboard and this uh, pit uh, that have uh, oracles integrated with aptos um that you can leverage for doing the same sort of communication that you mentioned uh uh yeah, i can see a question on the forum someone has asked but yeah that is something that can be baked in um as you said like about the ipfs metadata and stuff yeah the way that it works like from this point like from this perspective would be that they will have to actually um modify the entire token uri with the updated values like you can't do it like that like the way that uh, like for the use case that you mentioned for solidity that's the right way to go for it Uh, but the token data standards that i sent here for aptos it already has this token properties thing so even if uh, you don't get it from a like a oracle it's more or less fine unless it's something that is kind of um uh, something that that you actually do need to get from a oracle let's say like some particular token and and its price maybe you're creating a defi application on aptos and uh, for some reason you need to um maintain the price at different points of time uh, which will essentially be fetched differently from different uh, providers so for that i think you can think from an oracle approach uh, but for here i think it should it might just work out fine but uh, yeah i see this forum question but i do not see an answer to it uh, i'll also paste it here for other folks to see as well any other questions Hi Sneha sorry i joined it till 10 10 to 15 minutes late uh, can you please just uh, you know kind of reiterate the process how are we going to approach this uh, these these project like uh, is it going to be like individual team wise or uh, who can pick the which one and or is it like anyone can pick any project and then keep start working on it 
can you just a little bit talk about the process how are we going to proceed with this thanks uh, yeah ram i do not have much uh, idea over it uh, from what i understand that uh, it it's supposed to be 4 plus 2 weeks 4 weeks of like learning plus 2 weeks of project uh, but i'm not entirely sure uh, what is the structure for it uh, maybe fauzia or kiran can comment on it uh, on the like how this would be taken forward um fauzia are you there yeah hey uh, i'll just ask uh, kiran sir about it and get back to you sure uh yeah in in the meantime i will encourage all of you folks to basically start thinking around the ideas start think, figuring out at least what are the ideas that you want to develop and work on that's why we had we are having this discussion and then maybe post this class uh, fauzia can just reach out and let us know how that would look like and also the sheet that i've shared it's a open sheet only so maybe in one of these rows you can start uh, putting like the names of whoever wants to attempt like, like the particular idea so you can start updating it here so that other people can notice that hey this person is working on this idea maybe we can work together maybe we can build it however it might be for your case okay so coming back to this uh any other questions based on whatever we discussed otherwise i i want to uh, take on this uh, randomness thing that we just saw um mm, I'll wait. Uh, I'll be back in two minutes, folks. I'll wait. You can just uh, write in the this uh, chat if there is uh, something that uh, based on the ideas that we discussed that you want to ask further from the sheet. Um, if you can build it like this or that or whatever, I'll be happy to answer. Uh, post this. I want to take up this randomization bit on how you can create, generate random numbers and afters. Uh, okay. I'll just be back.
link. This oh, meeting shit. is being recorded. Um. Mm -hmm. Uh, can I develop as individual? I think Fauzia can answer that. Are the ideas on this sheet the only one we can work on? Are they the ones that are going to be funded back? Those um, Fauzia and Kiran would be able to answer this better, Keith. Uh, I yeah. do not have the clarity on this. I think I'm here, you know. So, hey guys, you know. Yeah, it seems it's like, you know, a couple of questions are around the projects. So, yeah. Uh, but we feel free to unmute yourself and then ask me a couple of questions. So, might be just to give set the context, you know. So, those are the projects that have been sent by the actors team. Um, so you can start uh, building either these projects or on top of that um, with some little bit of tweaking. Or if you have any specific uh, project idea in your mind, it could be completely new. You can start building uh, that as well. Um, so if you want to form a group, you know, form a um, group of like three to four, uh, four max, um, uh, if you want to do it on an independent note, you can feel free to do that as well. Uh, so if you are want, want us to form the groups, you know, might be, what we will do is, uh, uh, early tomorrow morning, Fauzia will float a, a Google form, uh, just fill in your details. Um, we will ask you like, what about your strengths, like front end, back end, um, you know, blockchain uh, so that we can actually um, you know, kind of form groups for you. Um, and that might be let's finalize this by Wednesday and then you can get started. Um, what are the other questions? Uh, Kiran, I think they're asking if the ideas will be funded by Aptos and how much time will they get to uh, make the project? Like when is the project submission? Cool. So this is like officially week five of our classes there, right? You know, so our classes will end uh, by next week. Um, I mean, um, depending on how the pace goes. Um, so you will have another two more weeks. So ideally, let's say so. This is week of uh, week of ninth. So one, two, three, four. So let's say November fourth. Uh, could be the deadline for you. I mean, if you're not able to completely we'll extend it by one more week, uh, November 11th. So just ensure that like you have all the stuff done by uh, by end of November 4th, you know, so that, that could be an interesting thing. Yeah, you can do project as an individual, not an issue at all. So with regards to, you know, the exact grant thing and how this uh, this is going to work, I'm having a call with Aptos team tomorrow. Um, let me get a little bit more clarity and then I can actually talk about that. I'll, I'll put a note in our uh, WhatsApp and Telegram group about, you know, the process there. Any other specific questions? I uh, don't see any more on the chat yet. Uh, I guess you can, we can just wait for a minute, Kiran, and you can drop. Uh, if they have something, we can just ask. So start working on it and if you have any technical you know, questions or queries and scenarios here to help you to guide through the process. Uh, okay, let me ask, has anyone started building? I think uh, Alice was thinking through a couple of ideas before and uh, yeah, Alice is saying yes. Yeah, that's totally fine. Okay. Uh, no, it's okay. Okay. So let's do one thing. You know, might be pause here. You know, what we will do is, we'll do a copy of this sheet and then share it to you. Uh, which is sort of editable by you guys, okay? So when I mean by editable, don't delete any data. Uh, we will add a column there. Um, 
what I will what we will do is you know just um look into those projects and then add your name name against that particular project if you are interested in picking up that part this project right and out of this ten ideas so that we get an idea so there are two things that we will do you know we'll share this sheet uh, put your name against um, the specific project if you are interested and the second thing is we'll float this Google form for you to form the groups there. Uh, Kiran, I just shared uh, like I before you came. I have I've done oh, that. Okay. Like shared the sheet and the name for column with them. Okay. I'll share that sheet with you as well. Okay. Um, so you folks can maintain it over there and with some references also I'm putting there so they can start building with that. So complex ideas like solidity to move. Uh, can I just create a POC? So I list. Can you might be elaborate a little bit? Uh, I'll give you the context, uh, Kiran. Basically, it's um, they have to uh, like the solidity contacts that are there. Uh, it gets converted to the move uh, byte code. Uh, so the, this will be like a more uh, yeah. This will be like a more uh, complex idea because essentially, uh, it won't always function the way that we want it to, um, or not give the desired results. So. I think it should be fine if they are able to build a POC for this because there are entire protocols or projects that are working on similar ideas uh, for moving solidity to rust uh, or other things as well. So I think it's 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 absolutely fine. Uh, Kevin, to answer your question, yes, as Kiran mentioned, you can do the project as an individual. Okay. Anything else, guys? Cool. I okay. Cool. I think that's pretty much all the questions, Kiran. Thank you for dropping in and helping um, them like with the questions and stuff. Cool, cool. I mean, if you have any further questions, just DM me anytime. Now, what's our page here? Thanks. Uh, one second. Oh, I think Kiran is wrong. Is he here? Uh, yeah, Kiran, the project ID also they can select, right? Other than the ones that I mentioned here. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, yeah. Oh, yes, Kavin, you can select. So, the, 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 yeah, yeah. The one thing is, like, you know, since let, let's make this as a master sheet for, for us. Uh, so, if you have a new project idea, just add your idea and then add your name again as that uh, in that particular column. Yeah, it seems like anyone can edit it. So, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, perfect. Okay, so now that we have cleared all of these doubts on the projects and stuff, I uh, want to move back to a more advanced example uh, around, along the cryptography side of things. Uh, because of second uh, example that we saw, this one, mm, third one, sorry, randomized slot machine plugin. Here we discussed finding randomized numbers, and we discussed that like uh, for solidity and stuff, we use Chainlink for doing this. So here uh, we are actually going to make use of this um, of this project called uh, DRAND. I'll just share my screen and show that one second. <laughs> yeah, so we are making use of this project called DRAN, um, which is a like a beacon, distributed beacon for random numbers. Um, so it's basically like an open protocol, and we can utilize this, and that is what is being utilized in Aptos as well. Uh, it has been integrated with other uh, like normal uh, chains as well. You can see Ethereum. Uh, here protocol labs so a couple of these folks are also here so underlying like you can make use of either their apis or their client libraries to get actually random uh, variables so verifiable unpredictable and unbiased random numbers as a service so this is what their uh, like basic description says distributed randomness beacon so this is what we'll be utilizing i'll just share uh, with you uh, how um, it's actually going to like how you can actually implement it uh, in Aptos. So, uh, can you folks see the screen? Um, 
so we are talking about verifying randomness from the dland beacon so so they have given an example i'll go to this but it basically shows how to verify public randomness uh and this randomness can be used in games or any other chance based smart contract just like the one that we are talking about here about the slot uh, this slot machine thing right so they have given an implementation yeah. of this sorry um does anyone want to say something okay uh coming back so yeah um so simple example of a lottery implemented on top of dland randomness and lottery dot move will will look into this um and another application that can be built on top of dland is time lock encryption which allows users to encrypt information such that it can only be decrypted in a future block so they do not have an implementation but you can basically create one of your own and then they have the all of the citations in the end that that's not important for us but let's open this dland example and see how this can be done okay so yes i can let me share my screen okay so here uh, i'll share this link as well yeah so this is the example that we're talking about um and this outputs a piece of randomness r underscore i for every round i such that anybody can verify it against d runs public key pk so uh, then they are talking about how they are actually computing it it's like a bls signature uh some complex stuff i do not know much about the uh, cryptography that goes behind this uh but essentially that's the way you can get the output for the same and that is what we are concerned about like what is the response for their rest api uh over here right uh, so let's actually see how it's being used so they are they have defined like a module with all of these things um as well as like the public key uh time stamp when at which the beacon started operating mm, error codes and based on this they have defined a couple of functions that is verifying and extracting randomness uh which checks if the randomness in signature verifies for the specified round and if it does then just return that a uh, random number which one shot api that consumes the randomness uh, basically i believe this is whatever randomness that you will be getting from here that you can use over here this is for the next round uh, next round and time stamp round number to bytes this is some math function that they are doing um but yeah this is essentially what they are using to compute and get uh the random number we are basically concerned only about this particular part of how it looks um where they are passing randomness and this randomness it would be coming from here i believe um they are specifying so this is returning a uniform number in 0 to max uh so this is like what they are specifying okay cool and randomness they had defined as an object created from a successfully verified piece of land randomness and it can be converted into a random integer cool so this is the way that they have uh, defined this and then they are making use of it in this particular lottery dot move example um i'll just show you so this example for decentralized lottery that picks its winner based on randomness generated in the uh, future by the dran randomness beacon okay uh, uh these warnings are actually quite important because when we are talking about randomness it talks about 
first of all this is not audited and it should not be relied upon and second of all it is making a strong assumption that up to clock and rand clock are synchronized uh, but that might not be the case um and if that's not the case it will uh, affect basically um so it is therefore important that contracts account for any drift between the uh, aptos clock and uh, drand clock so why that is the case whenever you are doing that verify randomness function which is checking if it's in that current round or not a drand route for now noon at friday would be incorrectly treated as a valid future drand route even though that round has passed so if there is some sort of a lag that is happening in terms of the time stamps associated this kind of a problem can happen uh it is kind of pseudo random that i guess we'll have to study deeply in terms of this d rand thing but what exactly it does uh but yeah this this can be pseudo random from the standpoint of what we just saw over here these these kind of things if the, these kind of things are happening then we cannot be essentially sure uh, of the actions uh, but i believe if uh, this is the this this, would, this is probably the underlying uh, protocol used everywhere um uh, mm, i guess we'll have to see how they are producing the numbers let me actually link it if you're interested to read more Okay, I think this is the part that is interesting that they have mentioned. Let me actually copy paste this particular part. Uh, they're talking about the challenge and how they have differentiated from the normal stuff. Uh, meaning that they are talking whenever we are discussing about randomness. No party should be involved in predicting or biasing that final outcome. and we are talking about how the dran network is not controlled by any of its members there is no single point of failure and none of the dran server operators can bias the randomness generated by the network so it is made up of a number of nodes running this protocol before generating they all agree on a threshold parameter each node creates a signature and random numbers are created by each node broadcasting a part of their signature to the rest of the network each node waits and collects these signatures until it has enough signatures to match the threshold parameter then this node can create the final signature uh then this is the bls signature that can be verified by the rest of the network if that signature is correct then the randomness is simply the hash of that signature that is how they are getting that randomness object that we just saw cool uh interesting stuff uh coming back to our example so these are the warnings that they have defined over here uh, especially this is one that we need to take care of because um as i said you need to account for whatever drift can happen between the aptos clock and the dan clock that's why they have done this by increasing the minimum lottery duration seconds to account for this drift now let us see what like what does this module look like so we have this uh, dan module uh, sorry uh, yeah lottery and then we have uh, call some imports here use statements um then we have to find some errors so the errors can be so when when someone tries to short start a very short lottery where users might not have enough time to buy tickets lottery is not long enough lottery has already been started uh, so if someone is trying to modify the time and lottery is drawn so once said this time cannot be modified which makes sense lottery has closed if a user is trying to purchase a ticket post the lottery has been closed so uh uh yeah obviously um and then lottery draw is too early users are trying to initiate the drawing too early 
enough time must have elapsed since the lottery started for users to have time to register. Uh, incorrect randomness when anyone submits an incorrect, incorrect randomness for the randomized draw phase of the lottery. Okay. Uh, minimum lottery duration seconds when it's like the time when it started and closed. Uh, so they have set this to 10 into 60, like in seconds basically, but 10 minutes. The uh, minimum price of the lottery ticket. And then they have defined the struck lottery, uh, which just has key means it's a resource. It will contain a list of users who have bought the tickets in a time past which the randomized drawing can happen. Uh, they have defined the list of users which have brought it. So because this is a vector of addresses, uh, specified when the draw ad can happen, the time when this will end. Um, and signer cap, uh, just storing the signer capability. Signer for the resource account storing the coins that can be won. So whoever will have control over that and the winner. Uh, then they have defined a friend uh, for this lottery test. This is the test module, uh, so not getting into that. This is for the testing bit. Um, so this is just creating a resource account, uh, creating a signer with the capability that is storing the coins, a real string initializing uh, the Aptos coin store, and then uh, initializing the lottery has not started. So whoever has deployed to that, we are creating this new lottery object and just moving it over there with empty list or empty, all of these options are like set to none. Um, getting the ticket price, just returning it, getting the minimum lottery duration in seconds, just returning it, getting the lottery winner. Um, this is where we are doing like a uh, borrow global mute and then just doing a dot winner over it. Uh, so I'm not sure why we are doing a mute over here. I feel like a mute is not required, but yeah. But we are just showing the winner from that. Uh, now the fun starts. Now we have the start lottery and what is happening here. Um, so over here, they have defined start lottery, allows anyone to start and configure the lottery. So that drawing happens at time draw at. So they are checking first if the lottery is open or not for people to buy. Uh, then they are getting that particular lottery object. Uh, so they are updating the lottery resource with the future lottery drawing time, effectively starting the lottery. Uh, okay, they are updating it over here and they are checking if uh, the lottery has already started so they can't update the time and then and now they have updated it then they are calling this function to buy a ticket for the end user to purchase a ticket uh, getting that particular lottery resource getting the draw at time that is there uh, checking if the lottery has closed or not if not then only the user can come in and buy uh, getting the address of the this thing and they are transferring whatever ticket prices from the user who wants to buy the ticket to the controller of the account who, who has control over the funds of their entire lottery and essentially then we are issuing a ticket so we are updating our lottery object um, with this particular user's address who has brought the ticket uh, then we are uh, then we have this function called close lottery so now is when the, the closed lottery is when the like uh, basically the drawing will happen and this is where the randomization will come into place. Uh, um, so if you see we are getting the lottery object, uh, we are getting the time, uh, we are checking if the lottery draw is too early. So it ha it needs to be started and it needs to have enough time before the drawing can happen. Otherwise we'll just uh, give this particular error. And then uh, what we are doing is uh, we are checking that uh, it could be that no one signed up. So they are uh, basically checking for some edge cases that are possible. So if there is no one that is there, uh, then nobody signed up, nobody won. So they are just like just closing the lottery. Um, and this is like one thing that 
even in normal code that we write right in order to bring down time complexity you can just handle for some edge cases right off the bat if things are empty or uh if things like are pretty or if it, if some array has zero elements or if some array has one element then possibly you will know what the edge case case will return for all the kind of situation so you can just return it right off the bat without it going to some like uh, loops or whatever so you can cut down on the time there so this is a good example of how you can save cache uh, by uh, handling for this particular edge case and yep so it's run down uh, we are just getting the time option extract then we are just returning basically just ending this particular call there um here otherwise what we end up doing is that through our random uh, rand protocol we are getting the next round after uh, and then we are passing that round we are passing this we are calling this function very fun extract randomness so that we can get our randomness object for this um we're getting our randomness object uh, if uh, if this is incorrect then we'll just return the incorrect randomness error otherwise we will pass this particular randomness and will generate a random number uh, based on it so what we are specifying here is the randomness and we are also specifying what's the maximum limit so we need to pick a number at random from 0 to lottery tickets minus one to figure out like who will be the winner and after we are able to find the id sort of of whatever that winner would be like the ticket number uh then what we do is we get the resource account again we get the address again uh we calculate the balance that the address has we then move funds um to the winner from our balance and we also uh basically set our winner uh we make this uh, again we reset the this thing the tickets um yep and we just set the winner and there are some more functions over here this is just to get the account that is controlling uh the lottery funds so we're just getting that particular account um and then we have defined like a test function which is just calling that init init module function that we have defined over here uh, over here yep so yeah that's a little bit around how you can use this grand protocol um so if you are talking about our randomized slot machine example what you can think of is over here like whenever uh, you are getting that different combinations right uh, you can have those generated from let's say each number has a possibility of going from uh, 0 to 5 uh, or 4 assuming that there are five possibilities uh 0 1 2 3 4 right like as in the symbol so one can be an apple one can be banana one can be guava one can be something else right so amongst all of these options you are generating some ram you are getting something uh, like a random number getting first you are getting the next round then you are passing this getting this function uh getting randomness from this function for that verify and get randomness function then you're passing that randomness object and the limit in this case like the five the maximum to which it can go and um, then you're getting that random number from there between like 1 uh, to 5 or whatever right so then you can accordingly uh, like show that particular symbol and then you're like completely sure that whatever uh, like random numbers come up from the slot these are actually random so you will have to repeat this process for the Uh, other numbers as well and then you can get uh, the combination uh, for what is there uh, another way of and another way to do this would be um you can basically if you are going for like a a different approach you can also think of it from a perspective of the digits coming together to being being a single number so you can say uh, compute uh, something in let's say 0 to 1000 or something except that it would not be bound by the same limitations in terms of the numbers that are possible in this case would be higher than the numbers that are possible in the other case that i just discussed for randomization right so you can define it or design it whatever way you want to uh, but keeping this as, as your prompt for getting the random numbers and then getting the 
uh, answer based on the same. Okay. Cool. So this is one idea like that we can take up. I'll also paste this in the chat as the example. Coming back to our sheet, any other ideas that you want me to discuss specifically? Mm -hmm. I also pasted this here. Let me also add some more resources for you folks to follow. All of these. So for this photo to an FT idea, this can be the IPFS pending service that you can use. Yeah, oops. Uh, okay, share my screen again. Okay, yeah, so I was just adding a couple of uh, links here. That can help with the ideas. If you have any questions around any of the ideas, uh, then feel free to ask. Learn to earn plugin, maybe you can check out build space. Uh, basically, just to get the idea of how you can structure it, like an example for you. Uh, this, I think, should be fine. Mm -hmm. Music NFT platform. Let me see if I can find some good references on Ethereum. This one is pretty simple, so I think this can be a good one for its simplicity. Let me put this here. If you want some complex ones, then you can check out. I think it's called Nifty something. Uh, I'm 
From Toker, I'm going to see if I can find a solid example. But yeah, I think basically it would involve uh, just coding in the rules, etc. Finding the linear this thing. So, yeah, I, I did, did find something here. Let me just make it. So I found a decentralized Google game engine written in Golang and Solidity. Uh, let me see if I can show you some parts of this. Okay, so they have moved the logic into uh, Golang, and let me see if it is. Uh, okay, so this does not have a actual solidity uh, smart contract in it, but I'll still share it so you can actually just take a look at the logic that they have implemented. This is also a very good idea, by the way, the poker one. This is also something that uh, is an instant revenue making idea. Like, think of it like all of the DeFi apps that are currently on Aptos. Uh, if they just plug it in or something, that can be a very good. Uh, seven card poker. Okay, apparently there are like three or four different types of poker as well. So. Okay, also found another one. Let me link that as well. Let me come back. So any other questions? Any other examples? Oh yeah, come in. I'm sharing a project which can be a good inspiration for the decent live talk you can answer.
So this one has edit access, folks. Please do not remove anyone's names or any ideas or anything else. Feel free to add things, but please don't remove things. Okay, cool. So if there are no further questions, I think uh, we can end this class. Um, for the next class, maybe uh, I'm not in direct communication with you folks, but if you have any questions around any uh, project ideas, etc., feel free to DM me.